Jessica said that her life consists of two phases. The first phase of my life is almost over. The second phase is about to begin. My feelings are mixed and intense. I just have to hold on a little longer before it's too late to back out. The first phase of my life consisted of two parts, pre-Reich and post-Reich. In my pre-Rev life, I was absolutely miserable. I was ugly, unruly, mousy brown hair, an acne-disfigured face, glasses, a double chin, small breasts, belly fat, and a big ass. I survived through self-deprecation. When someone made fun of my appearance, I agreed with them and laughed with them. And then I cried inside. I had several acquaintances and not a single friend. Meet? Ha! Huh. Then Ray showed up. It was a normal day in the school cafeteria. Some of the girls I knew teased me about how I would never get a date because of the way I looked, and I laughed along with them. Ray was a student whom everyone respected. He was athletic, smart, and good-looking. We knew each other, but were not close. Stop it! There is no reason to treat her this way unless you deliberately want to be mean and cruel. I will personally beat up every guy you sluts try to date if you don't stop your harassment. I was completely shocked. No one has ever protected me before. The girls looked ashamed and went to sit elsewhere. Ray sat down opposite me. I had no idea what to say. My joyful feelings about what happened quickly evaporated. Jessica, you are as bad as they come. How can someone respect you if you don't respect yourself? You are a good person, and I think you look just fine the way you are. I started crying loudly. They teased you because you had never been on a date. Let's forget about this insult. Jessica, would you like to go to dinner and a movie with me this Friday? I'm not sure what I said in response as my mind was in a fog from what he said. Obviously, I said yes because we went out that Friday and many times after that. When I was with him, I always felt beautiful, valued, and respected. We talked about many things, but my feelings towards myself were a common theme. Sometimes I had a date with someone else, but I was only happy when Ray asked me out. By the time we left school, two things had been settled. I had a modicum of self-respect, and I was in love with Ray. We went to college together and soon began living in the same apartment. He was my first and only. I enjoyed the sex we had every time. There was no moment with a marriage proposal. We both just knew we were going to get married. A couple of months after graduating from school, we both got jobs. We chose a house that could accommodate us and a couple of children. A few years later, our son arrived. It was kind of planned and kind of a surprise. We were ready to have kids and just didn't take any precautions to keep me from getting pregnant. My pregnancy was terrible. I gained almost 23 kilograms. My acne-ridden face looked like I had moon craters. For the last three months of pregnancy, my son seemed to know how to target every nerve in my pelvis just as I was falling asleep. I thought I was miserable, but I discovered that things could get worse. I had morning sickness and nearly died before Ray took me to the hospital. Fortunately, the child and I both survived. I begged Ray to let me get my tubes tied. I didn't want to go through that again. He agreed. Nathan, our son, was Ray's clone. They became close at first, which was good because I was in pain and didn't have much maternal feelings. Ray was and remains a great father. When they are together, I feel more like a maid than a wife or mother. I wasn't that unhappy. That's just the way things were. What made me depressed was the way I saw myself in the mirror. I looked even worse than when I was a teenager. Ray never complained and never stopped telling me that he still found me beautiful. No diet or exercise helped for a long time. Two incidents gave me the motivation to change. One of Nathan's friends, who was about four years old, pointed me out to his parents. She's fat. I laughed, but it hurt. It was very painful. Secondly, my parents died in a car accident. Although this made my depression worse, it gave me a large amount of money that I could use however I wanted. It seemed like every TV ad at the time was about facelifts, acne treatments, double chin reduction, belly fat removal. I went to Ray and told him that I wanted to use my inheritance to pay for various procedures to improve my appearance. I cried when I asked. Ray said it was my money, and I could use it however I wanted. He said he's fine with how I look now, but if it makes me happy, then he doesn't mind. That's when I started to change. 
It took two years of surgery, including breast implants, liposuction, and a tummy tuck. I also attended fat camps, which helped me get where I wanted to be. During this time, I had to often be away from home. Ray and Nathan seemed to be doing just fine without me. Nathan even joked when my face was wrapped in bandages. Look, my mom is a mummy. Along the way, I received advice on makeup and clothing. A new blonde hair color and hairstyle has been added, as well as a manicure and pedicure. Blue tinted contact lenses replaced my glasses. I realized that I had achieved my goal when I worked as a model in a clothing store, and the saleswoman said, Honey, you look so good that you could cure erectile dysfunction. My attitude also changed. I started making friends with other gorgios women, kind of like a Mylif club. Now, instead of talking about childcare and housework, I talked about sexual techniques and affairs. For these women, affairs were not something to feel guilty about. They were deserved. The idea of a novel became an exciting fantasy for me. The danger of sneaking up unnoticed and possibly getting caught. A chance to have sex with another man. Ray was the only man I ever had sex with. I blamed the unfairness of life for missing out on the opportunity to be with other men. I've overcome the injustices of life, so now it's time for me to get compensation for those miserable years of my ugly duckling life. I was in debt. My romance began when I was supposed to meet my friend Mary Jo at a new Mediterranean restaurant downtown. She highly recommended him to me. I got there early, which was good because the place filled up quickly. I sat at a round table outside with an umbrella over my head. After waiting for a while, I received a message from Mary Jo. Something happened at work, and she couldn't join me. I was just deciding whether to stay or not when he approached. His name was Gregor. He was a Greek god. I was immediately fired up with desire. I think he asked if he could join me for lunch since there were no seats available. He sat down, although I don't think I said anything. My romance has begun. He was everything new Jessica wanted. Handsome, dark-haired, dark-skinned, rich and something of a bad boy. Pretty much everything Ray wasn't. It didn't take us many meetings to end up in bed. It was wonderful. I didn't hesitate to try anything he wanted to do, anything I denied Ray. After a few months, I decided that I wanted Gregor all the time. He agreed. He planned for me to go to Greece with him and leave my old life behind. He offered new Jessica exactly what she wanted, a new life. Although I still loved Ray, I was in love with Gregor. I was grateful for what Ray did for me, but he was not my soulmate. Nathan was a good kid but he was, and always will be, a daddy's boy. During my surgeries, they proved that they could do it without me. I suffered a lot in my former life. Starting over in a foreign country with the love of my life became my main goal. Gregor asked me to start transferring my money to a bank account in Greece. He tried to help me set up, but transferring funds was such a hassle that I just gave him access to my accounts to do it for me. We were waiting for the perfect moment for me to just walk away. Ray could have filed for divorce because he was abandoned. There would be no divorce papers from me to warn him. Our chance came when Ray had a week-long workshop scheduled in San Francisco. Gregor and I had a short honeymoon planned in the Bahamas before heading to Greece. It was difficult to control myself knowing what was within my reach. Any concerns I had about what I was doing were drowned out by thoughts of my time in bed with Gregor and our future together. I was finally going to get what was coming to me from life. Ray entered the house at 6 Walal p.m., more than half an hour later than usual. His tie was off, and he looked terrible. Uncharacteristically, he tossed his jacket onto the couch and headed for the refrigerator. He took a glass from the cabinet next to the refrigerator and filled it halfway with ice from the ice maker. He then walked over to the liquor bar and picked up a Knob Creek bourbon. Once the glass was generously filled with bourbon, he took the ginger ale and drank it to the brim. He immediately took a large sip. He walked over to his deep chair and leaned back in it, trying not to spill his drink. His wife, Jessica, came out of the laundry room and walked down the hallway into the living room. You are late. 
I'll have to reheat dinner since you didn't bother to tell me you'd be late. Her husband's only answer was the look of his dead eyes. She decided to be more polite. Now was not the time to make a fuss. You look exhausted. Bad day at the office, huh? It's good that you have a big trip to San Francisco tomorrow. You can take your mind off all this office madness. By the way, have you collected everything yet? She found it difficult to act sad that he would be gone for a week when in fact she was excited about her planet escape with her lover to the Bahamas. Jessica was about to mention how much she would miss him when he interrupted. No need to pack your things. What do you mean? I am not going to. What? Jessica was gripped by fear that her plans with Gregor could collapse. Why aren't you going? Today I was fired. What? What the hell happened? Why were you fired? I lost my security clearance. My God. Ray, talk to me. What happened when you lost your security clearance? You. I. Your words don't make any sense. How could I be the reason you lost your security clearance? Don't you remember when I first started working at Teledyne, we both needed security clearances because my dealings with government agencies would be highly classified? Well, your clearance was revoked, which made me suspicious enough to revoke mine. No top secret clearance, no job. Why was my security clearance revoked? I did not do anything bad. I'm afraid Homeland Security doesn't agree with this. An affair with an ISIS terrorist is enough for them. Jessica sat down abruptly on the sofa. Denial was her first approach. That's funny. I did not have an affair with anyone, especially with a terrorist. Bitch, we're talking about national security. They can find out how many sheets of toilet paper you use per wipe if they want. They showed me photos and videos. Your boyfriend, Gregor, is not a Greek importer, as he told you. He is a high-ranking ISIS operative. I can't believe how easily you were tempted. Now I understand how little our marriage and my love meant to you. Ray, how can you say that? You know that I love you and only you. Gregor is just a friend. This is all a big mistake. Show me the photos. They didn't give me a copy. This is part of the evidence they collect. You'll see them soon enough. By the way, a friend cannot have sex with my wife, especially when she allows him to have sex in a way that she does not allow her husband. Her pretense that she wasn't having an affair quickly fell apart. I never allowed him to do anything perverted to me. You mean you have photos? I know that's not true. I can't believe the government spied on me. What I do in my personal life is my own business. What about my right to privacy? I think I'll sue. Will you sue the government? Ha! You lying slut. You should be grateful. Grateful? Why should I be grateful? My future is ruined just because of your stupid security clearance. You should be grateful that the FBI found out about him when they did. You thought you were going to the Bahamas with him. Do they know about this? Yes. Gregor planned to kidnap you if you didn't come willingly. He was going to demand a ransom for you to force me to divulge some secret information. Whether I gave him the information or not, you were going to be sold as a white slave in the Middle East. Jessica thought for a couple of minutes. You are lying. You found out about me and Gregor and are making up lies to keep me from going with him. Well, that won't work. He is my soulmate. We were destined to be together. Your lie wasn't even that smart. Well, I'm not going to buy it. I'm calling him right now. Ray approached her, knocked her mobile phone out of her hands and slapped her in the face. Jessica began to cry. You won't call him. The feds arrested him hours ago. I hope they get all the members of his cell. They will come for you last. You will be charged as a co-conspirator. What? But I didn't know anything about it. I'm innocent. Innocent? You're having an affair and you're planning to run away with all my money. Do you have any idea what your lover did with all our money that you gave him access to? He only took my half. He... He had to open an account so we could live in Greece. You're an idiot. He took all our money. They were used to buy S-4 explosives and detonation devices. They have plans to blow up a children's hospital. Wouldn't that be a punch in the gut? Can you imagine the headlines? Slutty wife helps ISIS bomb babies. Your name would become a household name. You would go down in the history books as an even greater traitor than Benedict Arnold. No one will ever name their girls Jessica again. Don't worry. 
you can still become famous. The feds pray that they can get to Gregor's men before they can detonate the explosives. If not, you will be at least semi-famous. Or is it shameful? Jessica sobbed loudly. It's too terrible to imagine. What have I done? Ray, I don't know what to do. I was so stupid. I can't believe I fell for his bullshit. Please, I don't want to go to jail. Can you help me? Why on earth would I want to help you? I wouldn't want to help a wife who forgets to keep her vows to leave everyone else. I wouldn't want to help a wife who was stupid enough to believe that a wealthy importer would be attracted to a married secretary. However, I'd like to help a slut who had AIDS, leprosy, STDs, and Ebola before I'd want to help you. Do 11 happy years of marriage and a child mean nothing to you? Yes. This means that I was fooled for much longer than I thought. This means I have to become a single father without a job. This means I have to explain to my son why he won't see his mom again. This means that he and I will have to endure years of suffering even though we have done nothing wrong. I didn't mean to hurt you and Nathan. I know you would feel bad at first. Oh God, I don't know what to do. Do you want me to take some of my things and leave? You don't need to worry about that. The feds will be here soon. You won't have to worry about food, clothing, shelter, toiletries, or entertainment for a long time. But I didn't know what Gregor was doing. Of course you see it. Of course the government will see this. You were willing to give up your current family to risk your entire future to be with a man you didn't know what he was doing. Perhaps you will escape severe punishment as long as they believe that you could be so stupid or so overcome with lust. If you're lucky, I'd guess they'll put you in a program that will hide your identity. In fact, I think my son and I would have to participate too. The bad guys may want revenge on all of us. Oh my God. Do you really think our lives will be in danger? I can't believe this is happening. Of course, nothing threatens us. ISIS likes to be merciful to people who kill their jihad warriors. So we'll all be hiding together? Not if I have anything to say about it. The doorbell rang, Dian Dong. You might as well open the door, dear. Homeland Security will arrest you. No, no, no. Please, Ray, help me. I'm sorry, I was fooled. I never wanted to hurt anyone. You had no problem leaving me and our son alone, hurting our feelings and taking our money. I see no reason not to repay you in kind. Open the door before it's broken down. Jessica stumbled towards the door, still crying. She opened the door and saw a man in a dark blue suit and hat. He said, Jessica Sellers? Yes. You've been served. He handed her an envelope with divorce papers inside. Jessica looked at Ray with a big question mark on her face. Ray smiled. You bastard. You really made up this story about Gregor. He's not a terrorist. Well, I needed proof of your affair. I've had my suspicions for some time. I knew some of it, but you filled in the details for me. Our entire conversation was recorded this evening. Gregor is not a terrorist, but he is a liar, a cheater, and a gigolo. He was deeply in debt and planned to take our money and run away. When you arrive at the airport for your trip to the Bahamas, you won't find it. He and our money would be out of the country. You'd be standing at the airport feeling very, very stupid. How do you know that's what he was going to do? The police did arrest him this afternoon for theft, conspiracy, and, in my opinion, alienation of affection. The IRS will likely add one or two charges. He confessed without any pressure. He wasn't very kind in his description of you and your sexual abilities. Looking for a way out, Jessica came up with, Ray, honey, you saved me once. Do you have enough love left that you can give me a second chance? You think so? Do I have any options in a divorce? A little. Leave now, and I'll pay for a motel room for two weeks. In exchange for not telling the world about your betrayal, I will give you half of my property and your car. I will get primary custody of our child with free visitation rights, especially given your willingness to give him up. No alimony, no child support. It's still cruel. I can't believe you. After what you did to your family, I should just... I can't say what I would like to do. Just get out. I have to prepare to tell my son about his cheating mother. Years later, Ray and Nathan got along really well, just as Jessica predicted. 
Along with work, being a good father was enough to keep Ray busy. Nathan became actively involved in sports, football in the fall, basketball in the winter, and baseball in the spring. Ray rarely missed a game, parent-teacher conference, and participated in many fundraising events. In the social arena, Ray did find a couple of friends who had benefits that allowed him to trim his antlers. None of the friends came close to what could be called a relationship with Ray. Soon Nathan will start driving and Ray will have less free time. He suggested that maybe then he could think about a serious relationship. One day the doorbell rang. He opened the door and saw Jessica, the old Jessica. It was obvious that she had canceled most of her previous surgeries. She looked almost like the Jessica he first fell in love with. After waiting for him to speak, she broke the ice. I answer your unspoken question. Everything except working with the chest. I just couldn't refuse them. I spent almost all my settlement money to cancel the surgeries because I wanted to show you that I can be the same Jessica again, the one you fell in love with and helped become a worthy wife and mother. I would like us to start over, at least as much as possible. The way I look now won't entice men to hit on me, so that temptation is removed. I want my actions to prove to you that I will return to Jessica, who loves you more than anyone else. I can't prove it to you unless you let me be there for you and Nathan. I'm not talking about marriage. Just to be a part of your and Nathan's life again. I know it will take you and Nathan a long time to trust me again, but I promise you can. To prove my sincerity, I spent every cent I have prepared for my arrival here today. I have nowhere to go. I am completely in your power, fully ready to prove her love for her family. She knelt down. Deep down, I believe that your heart is big enough to let me back in. I beg you for the sake of our family. I promise that I will do my best so that you will eventually look back on this time and feel grateful that you gave me a second chance. She looked at him hopefully with a tear-stained face. Ray took a deep breath and replied, I think I'll have to remain ungrateful. He slammed the door in her face. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one.